We are on to the other side of the um, case now. We're going to look at the cam chain, um, the tensioner uh, system and the magneto as well. Um, it's a horrible day out there so again no painting of the side cover. Um, so we're just going to go on with the other things that we can do. I have uh, just cleaned the cam chain. Um, I am denied whether to bother doing it because it was um, it was uh, in its original oil, but I'm quite glad I did because um, this was a brand new clean kettle that I wiped out beforehand. I don't know if this is going to show up on camera at all, but the amount of sort of sandy grit that came out of it um, is quite incredible, really. So it was well worth the five minutes just to um, to wash it out. Uh, the chains had a good bath of oil, having been thoroughly cleaned. Um, I'm noting the orientation of the chain because I marked the back of the chain um, before I uh, before I removed it from the bike. The next part I'm going to fit is the lower cam chain guide or guard. I gave this a quick bath as well just to uh, clean it up. I also took the opportunity to clean my socket because I noticed there was a lot of crud in there. Um, I don't know if that's something that you're supposed to do but it kind of made sense if you're trying to keep things clean. much better. Right, I'm just going to screw that down. The next job, which could be fiddly, is to get the two washers and the C-clip back onto the bottom of the tensioner without losing the C-clip. Yeah, right, I'm chipping away at my lifetime supply of grease. I'm just going to put a blob on the shaft and hopefully that will be sticky enough to hold the washers out of the way and give me a bit more free rain. Also glue them together with a bit of grease. The grease will get washed off in the oil flow when it when the engine gets running. Well, at least they're staying up. It gives me a free hand. So I retracted that. I have the C-clip on the end of a pair of pliers. I'm just going to see if I can push it onto there. Is that on? That's on there. Okay, next is the uh, cam chain tensioner. Okay, so the forks go between the two washers, like so, and then plug into the cam tensioner like that. And that should give us the adjustment. And before I forget about it, I'm going to put the uh, locking nut on top here. Excellent. It's time to fit the generator. Um, I spent a few minutes getting organised, so I've got my torque wrench ready. Uh, I've got the right socket, so there'll be less faffing about, hopefully. Uh, my big concern with this is that as I get um, this magnet close to this, it's going to want to pull things apart, in particular this um, tensioner here. So I'm just going to slide a screwdriver gently down the back here, just to hold it into position until I get this seated. Otherwise, I think it's just going to suck it out towards itself. Um, there's a little uh, uh, notch in there. This is the back of the uh, magneto and this is the front. You can tell it's the front because it's got all the timing marks on there. Uh, I'll put a bit of oil on the splines and hopefully we can just seat this into place without it disassembling everything. Tweak it up with a normal socket. Time for my torque wrench terror again. I may have mentioned that I'm not a huge fan of them, especially as I can only afford cheaper ones. Although I think on these bigger applications it's not so bad. It's the, it's the small nuts that make me nervous. The ones you can shear. <laughs> so I'm setting this to 27 Newton meters. 
which is about a midpoint for the torque. Okay, we'll call that done. Before I forget about it, I'm going to insert the neutral switch. And that's done. I fished out the replacement um, aftermarket generator um, rubber seal that goes around the edge of it. And I would say that in terms of size, it is both thinner and narrower than the original. Now given that the original still feels to be in good condition, I am going to opt to reuse the original rubber seal um, rather than use the aftermarket one. Now I'm being careful because there are some delicate um, copper wires that run between these, um, these uh, stators so I don't want to damage them at all. Oh, and already the <laughs> magnet is grabbing this towards itself. I'll just line up. Where it's supposed to be. Let's see. There's a rubber bung that goes in its slot there. How far in does this go? Is that it? Is that rubber seal and to bust up against all that? Ah, I see how it works. The rubber seal forms a seal around the edge. I'm with you. Okay, so I'm not going to discard the uh, cheapo aftermarket one. I'm going to see if we have any leaks, if we have any issues. Then I've got a spare seal to put in there. I'm going to check my bolt holes are lined up and then... Well, not bad. Not bad, just a little tweak. A slight rotation. And I think my bolt holes are now... In alignment. I'm hoping because the magnet is dragging it down slightly that when it's bolted into place it'll just lift it clear with enough clearance on there. I want to get them started by hand so I don't cross thread them. Now that that's in place, uh, when I rotate the crankshaft, I can feel the magnetic drag on it, but there is no physical contact between the um, rotor and the stators. Make sure that all looks right. Should just tighten up against the case and keep it out of the way. Brilliant. No struggle with this thing. It's time to fit, um, I think, the final drive oil seal because as soon as we get that in there, there's less chance of crap getting in there and into the bearing directly behind it. I have to get the new seal over all this um, spline work, especially there's a, a, a groove cut around it which um, allows the uh, locking plate to go on for the uh, final drive sprocket. Um, and that's likely to tear a seal to shreds if I push it over there. So what I'm going to do is put a little bit of tape around here to allow the seal to slide over those splines um, and then plenty of oil uh, down this end to allow it to ramp up onto the shaft itself. Then I'm going to use the old seal and a, a large socket to drive the uh, new seal home. I've now got um, duct tape on the shaft. I've not gone as far back as the seal lip would be because I want to be able to obviously remove it afterwards. It's another good reason for using duct tape over masking tape is it has that plasticky finish to it which should allow it to slip easier and I want plenty of oil around the bearing and the new seal. I want plenty of oil around the edge of that and inside the seal itself. Okay, here goes. So, oh, that worked exceedingly well. 
The next bit is the old seal, which I'm going to use as a buffer to help drive in the new seal. And then, hopefully, this socket, is it deep enough? The new seal home. Don't know how far in this new seal has to go. Preferably straight. I think I'm going to go until it until it bottoms out. Problem is it bottoms out on the bearing, so I don't want to go. Yeah, I think pending an inspection, I think we're probably pretty much there. That's another example why you shouldn't throw away the old seals straight away as soon as you pull them, because they do have their uses when it comes to fitting the new seals. Um, and stops you damaging them. That seems to be seated nicely at home now so uh, it's nice and even all the way around and you can feel the drag of the um, of the seal on the, s on the shaft so yeah happy with that. Right it's a final clean for the cylinder head um, before uh, that gets rebuilt hopefully later on this afternoon. Um, the uh, reason I'm giving it a final clean is that I want to make sure that all particulates are out of it, uh, in particular around the cam journals, um, where if there's any grittiness, then it will chew the cam faces to pieces, uh, certainly the bearings to pieces. So I'm going to pay particular attention to that area, uh, and again in the exhaust ports and the valve stem um, as well, because obviously we've, I've done some uh, valve lapping, which uh, which leaves a little bit of a gritty finish afterwards. So that definitely needs to be cleaned out. Cylinder head assembly time. We are going to start with the exhaust valve, um, which is the one that has the exhaust valve seal on it. It's quite deep down in there, so just bear with me while I desperately try and get it on there. Nope. Get it seated on there roughly. <laughs> oh dear, it's going to be one of those jobs. Right, I've only got one of these, so I can't mess this up. God, it's a long way in there. On the valve, the stem, check. Give it a wiggle. Let's see if we can get it to. Nope. I bet there's a really simple way of doing this, and I have no idea what it is. With the XL, you had loads of room to get to them. You literally just put them on and push them. With this one, there's just no room. Hmm. I wonder if sticking it in a socket would allow me to... I don't want to mash it up, that's the... Okay, as you know I was struggling to get that on, so what I've done is I've found an 11mm socket is a nice sliding fit for that part. The part is nicely supported in there, I'm going to just see if I can use that tool just to wiggle it on there. That'd be a no so far. Okay, 12mm socket. Oop, there she goes. Okay, so 12mm socket had enough room to allow it, the um, spring on it to expand, whereas I think the 11 was a little bit tight, and um, it seems to have pushed it straight on there. Very good. That was a pain in the ass. That is deep. Okay, that's in now. The washers. There are two. There's one for the big spring and one for the small spring. Okay, that's not seated. 
Okay, they're both seated now. Small spring. What's that one? Large spring. Okay, and that, that both centres the outer spring and the inner spring. Okay, that's the spring compressed. Now, put some grease on there just to help the collets stick when I put them in there. And a little bit of grease on the collet as well. Right, that's number one. Let's try number two now. I did do some swearing. I find it helps. Done it. Or is it going to fly off and hit me in the face? Well, I think we're in. Right, I won't make you watch the next one. Um, so I'm going to attempt to fit the uh, rockers and rocker shafts now um, before the head goes back on the bike at a later time so we can have this as one assembled unit. Uh, it consists of a shaft. It consists of the rocker itself, and there is a uh, plate that holds um, holds them all together while they're uh, while they're off the uh, off the top of the cylinder because the cylinder studs actually lock these into position. Let's start with the wheel. Let's start with the wheel. Okay. Carefully wearing gloves all this time. Oh, I forget to put them on now. Just check something. Okay, so it's tight tolerances, so everything's got to be lined up absolutely smack on, otherwise, it's not going to work. that one in and then rotate it rotate the shaft until uh, the cutout in it lines up oh it almost is there we go so both cutouts are lined up now that's the turn of this re uh, retaining plate this little moustache which fits in here and just holds them in roughly the right position stops them sliding out uh, whilst the head's off the uh, top of the cylinder and that has got a little 10mm bolt it is a tight space to work in there um, I've got fat fingers so it makes it doubly difficult and stupidly I didn't think to use my head torch which once I dug that out made the uh, second one so much easier so there we go we've got the rockers in place um, they're just loosely on their shafts, um, not tightened down. We don't want to do that until um, until the cam's back in and we set the clearances. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to put that back in its box for now, and uh, it'll be ready to fit when we uh, when we come to it.